here we go. I think I've got to start again. So, um, yeah, I was just saying that after the London protest, uh, I've had a sore throat this week um, and I've rested and stayed home and kept myself to myself and I'm feeling better now but I'm still a little bit croaky. <laughs> if uh, Maybe my voice is breaking. Maybe if I go to the doctors they'd put me on some hormones. Mm. I'm not quite sure what to say to that. The um, It's a beautiful Beautiful evening, it's been a gorgeous day, it's warm, the sky is blue, there's a few, few cotton wool clouds in the distance behind, and not a chemtrail in sight today, so thank goodness we've been allowed a nice sunny day in summer. May we have many more. Um, And uh, just looking at the, the state of the world, the news of the world. Tragedies happening in lots of places. God bless the, the children. Uh, I uh, just want to see this knife crime and it's um what you know well we do know what's going on because the lawless times need to be identified in order to show how that Christ consciousness for love that Christ consciousness for the foundation of the law of spirit which includes the self-control you know when people do all of these things they've lost the self-control and they're stuck in the fleshly traits and I'm speaking of Galatians 5 here which asks us to walk in spirit which is opposite to the flesh to the fleshly traits of the hormonal stress and confusion and Um, and yeah, it's you know that's clear to me. The foundation of my work when I read that scripture, it was oh my gosh, that's all the hormones. It's all about stabilising our hormones to love, stabilising, balancing our hormones to love because love is not a cortisol stress hormone that comes. From the grief, hurt, trauma, stress, pain, from fleshly traits, from abuses, from abuses to the to the flesh, abuse to the body, from drugs, from alcohol, from infidelity, from the conflict in the mind with the self. And so God's love is about attaining to that self-control, his counsel is for that self-control and, um, and patience, not to sin or hurt another. And yes, Christ forgives sins, but you know, show me where in scripture he says carry on doing it. Yeah, please all you people who, uh, <clears throat> who um, <laughs> criticise uh, my work on uh, the gemstones of the new heaven of the new Jerusalem yeah just show me where Jesus Christ or God say carry on sinning hmm actually it does say it at the end of Revelation um, because that's what shows the difference between those who have the moral and righteous love of God against those who don't and that's very clear to see now in these end times. Um, and the Olympics, the opening ceremony, 
you know, what a, how, how can you mock God? How can you mock Christ in the Last Supper? But you're also telling the world where we are in these end times. And so, uh, yeah, millions of people across the world will have seen it, will have heard about it. And so, that message is out there. The apocalyptic horses are riding. The red, black and pale horses ride with thunder. And so it's um, clear to see that the white horse is the, um, the return of Christ. And um, him conquering the, the fear and the stress and the grief and the hurt and the pain with his love, with his moral and righteous love to say the wages that sin pays is death. It's death of that Holy Spirit of peace. And hence Pentecost was the beginning of the church. Is that attaining to that state of peace, the quiet conscience. We'll talk about the quiet conscience because that's where the peace comes from. And it's uh, only by repenting and saying no to, to sin and things that are wrong. And there's many good people who live like that. Many good people. But we need to look at the state of the family and the children. And we need to know that they need to be put first in God's eyes. Because that's where home comes from when we're here on earth. Home is from attaining to that love, that peace, and that joy, and faithfulness, happiness, the fullness of spirit within, that feeling safe. So when First Thessalonians 5 talks about peace and safety, that is from the trust. And that can only be upheld by justice being upheld. Submitting to God's rule, submitting to God's love. We don't need to have left and right and far right and far left and red and blue and green. We need to have government that upholds God's laws for the moral and righteous love to prevail for the safety and the peace of our children, not to confuse them, not to not to make them feel uncomfortable in their body, not to make them feel not good enough. That's not love, is it? And so I share this message and from the vision of light that, uh, that I was granted over there at the most broken time in my life <laughs> when everything fell apart like God I just can't carry on anymore but I had all of this work I had hmm, probably well, not all of the poems in China, but I had a lot of those poems and I had my non-fiction work on the, the new heaven and how, um, how I worked it all out uh, but it's all through my life experience as well and my experience as a therapist. And so the new heaven, the new Jerusalem, is described in, in gemstones. And so they are the crown jewels, our real crown jewels, of how to attain to the peace of the crown chakra. And so for attaining to the peace of the golden halo, which I would say is a crown chakra. <laughs> a 
And it's the uh, the gold that uh, comes from the positive state of being in the state of love. Um, but many people have problems with chakra and energy. Um, it is just energy and vitality. And the frequency of love and light, light within us from our endocrine system, from uh, going along. from our endocrine system, attaining to the love, attaining to love instead of fear, so trust and faith rather than stress and fear. And only then can we have the, the peace. And so the stones are rolling in. The stones are rolling in, rolling in, wiping away my tears, your tears, our tears, and fears. Stones restoring, fulfilling my faith, your faith, our faith, reviving love, knowing God is love. I hear their cry. I hear their cry, sing for Jerusalem, which means twofold peace. I hear their cry for new Jerusalem, twofold peace for heaven on earth. Zion, the holy city, to which all nations will stream. May the river flow. May the tears flow to mourn those griefs, hurts and pains that God promises to wipe away for resurrection. The revival of God's love and light for enlightenment of love anointed. Namely Jesus Christ who is returning, the light is getting brighter. So bright, the force of evil is trying to dim it. The force of evil is chemtrailing and levying the fax tax. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Healed, blessed, happy, healthy. So death of God's spirit of love will be no more. God's whole spirit of love will prevail. For love upheld, for justice upheld, for peace and safety, peace and security, and trust for justice upheld. Peace of the Holy Spirit for heaven on earth, as promised for the promised land to come. Come, Lord Jesus. Revival for Passover, Pentecost, peace with the Holy Spirit for a quiet conscience for healing. Peace is not a cortisol stress or man. And so we do need to attain to moral and righteous. is love and light for enlightenment of love anointed which is the meaning of the most high name Jesus Christ in scripture or that's Yeshua HaMashiach in Hebrew Isa in Arabic Christos in Greek and uh, I'm reading and learning about that more now <coughs> But it's the meaning of the name, it's the most important thing to cause love to become made whole and one, anointed within us, to be the sons and children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are all children of God. May the wars end, and may that holy city of Zion to which all kings will and nations will turn in God's timing then.
Hallelujah. We're at that time.